Um, so I'm just going to give the briefest hello. I think there's an echo, but maybe we're okay. But Scott, thank you so much for, for coming today. Sure. Um, I know personally people are talking to me and they're saying, well, kids really don't get sick. And, you know, I try to sort of engage with them and talk to them, but, you know, really, I just want to start telling people, it's like children get sick. You know, we've had 45, 43,000 children hospitalized with COVID as of June 9th. A thousand children have died. I mean, we need to be vaccinating. I'm so happy this vaccine is here. Oh, here's Lisa Wolf. Okay. So with that, um, I thought we could just briefly go through, hi, Lisa, um, everybody, and they could introduce themselves and if they have vaccinated this age group. So I'm just going to start. I have vaccinated young children, and I haven't done a great job, but I really learned from Julie Fetterman, my prior boss, and she just was all about soothing the parents and then soothing the child, and boom, uh, would, would vaccinate them. Maybe this age is a little easier than the, the sort of the six-year-olds that can get up and start, <laughs> start kicking at you, so. Yes. Yeah. Ma Maureen, have you vaccinated this age group? No, I've been in the holder position <laughs> with some kicking <laughs> children of my own. Um, no, never. Rich, have you? No, I have never vaccinated this age group, at least not that I can remember. Yeah. And Diane? I have not vaccinated. Am I on mute now? I have not vaccinated. I've given injections, but not vaccinated. Good distinction. Robin, how about you? Yes, um, particularly newborns, but I have vaccinated this population. Oh, you have newborns. And well, Mario, I've been back in my Holyoke Hospital days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about it, Mary? What have you done? Yeah, years ago, I worked at Amherst Peds and used to vaccinate this age group. It was a while ago. So. <laughs> gotcha. And hello, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Lisa, you vaccinate this group, uh, well, would you say I, regularly? You know, I've, been a, I've been an ER nurse for 25 years, so we do injections of all kinds of things, including vaccinations on really little kids, so I'm pretty mm -hmm. comfortable with that. That's great, great. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the agenda I sent out recently, or actually Lillian sent out, thank you Lillian for coordinating all of this, um, has some referrals, um, references that the state has put out and they're, they're pretty recent. So I updated it. There's new IM injection sites for 11 months and older, one to two years. So it's the vastus lateralis, it's the, um, um, and then the deltoid. And then there's some, the CDC video. So I feel like I know the web, this stuff may have been there, but maybe it was hidden. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Scott and just um, if there's anything you want to start with, um, or if you want to start with questions, but thank you. Well, let me let me go ahead and say what I had prepared to say, and then we'll, be, it won't be that long. There'll be plenty of time for uh, questions. And one thing that I will say is, if, if you guys who have had experience vaccinating young kids have other suggestions as we go, by all means chime in. If you think what I'm saying makes no sense, by all means say so. Some of you probably have more experience vaccinating young kids than I do. <clears throat> you know, where I work, it's the nurses who give the vaccines. I do occasional vaccines. I, many years ago, I did all my own vaccines. It's been a long time since I've done that. And um, I'm, often, <laughs> I'm often the helper when a nurse has a tough time with it. So uh, uh, please chime in. Um, the other thing I will say is if you've looked at the, the information that Lillian sent out, both a handout type things and the videos, I don't think anything that I say will be very new to you. Uh, if you haven't looked at them yet, I think it's a good idea to look at them. Um, so let's start with location of the vaccines where you usually do them. And I, and I think the, the CDC makes it a little more complicated than it needs to be. Um, I think if you think of anybody under 36 months of age or three years, the, the preferred site is really the, the thigh, the upper outer thigh. Um, certainly it's an option over 12 months to do the deltoid in, in the second year of life there, there isn't a huge deltoid muscle in the third year between age two and three, there's a bit more. 
And some parents may really prefer it. And if, if the mom says, I want the shot to go in the arm and the kid is two years old, I think it's fine to do that. Um, but the, the <clears throat> upper outer quadrant of the thigh is the biggest muscle mass. It's the biggest target. It's kind of it's just the easiest way to do it. Um, so, so it is an option over, over 12 months to do uh, the deltoid, although I think certainly under age two, uh, the, the thigh is the choice and really under age three. If you just think of under age three, it's just aim on doing them all unless parents choose otherwise, or the, you know, the near three-year-old may hold on to his pants and not allow you to bring them down and then maybe you want to do the deltoid. But I, think, I think that's the easiest way to remember it is under three. Um, uh, needle size. I, I think uh, you mentioned that we'll be having one inch needles. Is that what my understanding correct? We, we have some five inch, five eighths um, okay. th that we've ordered. So we have about 300 of those. Oh, good, but, good. But yeah, the CDC has given us one inch. So Yeah. So if you're doing the, the upper outer thigh, the, the one inch needle is certainly the best choice. Uh, you, you can't go too deep uh, when you're doing the thigh and you wanna get in beyond the, the fat pads. So um, one inch, if you're doing a deltoid muscle and it's a fairly small kid, then five H is probably a, a good choice. Although one inch is fine. You just may need to be a little bit careful about not going too deep. Although I will say the biggest danger is not going deep enough. You wanna go beyond the connective tissue and the fat pad into the muscle. If you happen to hit the bone, it's not a big deal. Just back up a little bit and, and, and give the shot. I know I, in, in, in our vaccination clinics, I've had some elderly ladies who had less of a deltoid than some of our three-year-olds have. <laughs> and, and I hit a bone or two. And as long as you're doing it gently, you're not gonna hurt anybody. And just pull back a little bit, give a shot and you're, you're done. Um, so with the thigh, always a one inch. Uh, you have a choice either way with a deltoid. If it's a, a, a chunky kid, <laughs> lots of fat or a big muscle, I would do a one inch. Otherwise, five eighths is, is good. Um, finding the site is pretty easy. Um, I mean, the deltoid or, or rather the thigh, really, if you just kind of draw across across the front of the thigh, upper outer quadrant is what you want to do. Um, the most important thing is make sure that you're going 90 degrees to the skin as, as we, we do in the deltoid as well. Um, if you go straight up and down and you're doing the, uh, the lateral side of the thigh, you may not get into the muscle. So go perpendicular to the skin. So you're kind of going, you know, at an angle when you're doing the thigh. Um, if you want to make sure you're finding the right spot on the deltoid, you can do a finger or two finger breaths below the acromion. And uh, uh, you should be right there. You should, you should feel the, the muscle right under your finger. Um, any questions about where to get the shot or needle sizes, that sort of thing? It's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, the biggest deal really is positioning for safety and comfort, I think. Um, and, um, I, I, and, you know, your parents are going to be an active participant here. Uh, a lot of parents may have a position they like to hold their kids in. So no matter what we're telling you or what the CDC is telling you, if the parents have a way to do it that works for them, it's, it's great with me. And these parents have had a lot of experience giving their kids shots or having their kids you know, get shots. So uh, they're, it's good to listen to them. Although I will say sometimes parents say this works for me. And then the moment the child struggles, parents let go. So <laughs> you never know. So be prepared for anything. Uh, but uh, certainly listen to what the parents have to say. If they're getting a child into a position that looks like it's going to work for you, then, then go for it. Um, so positions, and I can, I'm going to try to demonstrate a little bit. I, I used to have a, a, a three-year-old size rag doll that worked for this kind of a thing, and I, I can't find it. It's, it seems to be gone. Uh, so I'm going to use my pillow here as my child. I'm going to move this camera away a little bit. Maybe you can see me a little bit better. Thank you so much, Scott, for doing this. Sure, sure. I hope this works. You can sort of see me. So this is my child. If you think of one end, this is the head. This is the, the hips. Legs are coming down from, from below. There's an arm coming out here. There's an arm coming out here. The, the CDC, CDC videos show three different positions for uh, um, 
uh, infants, uh, one for toddlers and one for, for three years and up. Um, but they're all really variations on the same position. Um, I find from many kind of procedures, kid, parents really have better control. If kids are sitting sideways on their lap, parents often want to sit their kids this way and they don't seem to, to be able to control them as well. So when I'm you know, doing whatever, looking at ears, things like that, this is, this is often sideways is a better position. So with, with infants, generally on their back, on, on the mom's lap uh, goes well. Um, the arm that's closest to you can be just tucked between their body and, and the mom or dad's belly. And, and the parent has an arm under the head and then around and really holding that uh, opposite arm really firmly. Uh, legs can be tucked in between the parent's knees and then they're holding the knees with their, with their other hand. So arm is secure between their body and yours, the other arm with the, the parent's hand leg secure between the knees and hand right over the knees. And you should be, they should be able to hold pretty firmly. Don't, don't be afraid to tell the parents to hold firmly just for a minute. It's, it's kind of an act of love to do that. Um, some parents are afraid to, to really restrict their kids, but it's gonna go a whole lot better if they do. Um, for toddlers, it's, it's not much different. Kids, toddlers wanna be a little more upright and that's just fine. The biggest difference is the arm uh, close to you can be tucked in around the, the parent's back. And if, if, if they then hold the child closer, then that arm is stuck back there and can't, can't do very much. And then the same thing, the, uh, the parent's arm is around, uh, holding the arm firmly against them, legs between their legs, thigh is right here, holding onto the knees and They've got a pretty good grasp. And, um, and then with uh, older kids, it's really about the same thing. They just really want to be all the way upright. And again, the kids can sort of hug their parents with the arm, the close arm behind the parent's back. Parents can, can hold the other arm down. And in this age group, you're going to be doing the deltoid, so the parents have to have a really good hold on that forearm. Uh, you're going to be controlling the, the, uh, the upper arm. And some kids really hate the restriction of their legs being between a parent's legs. If they can stay still, it's certainly okay to have legs kind of dangling down. Um, and again, if, if, if uh, kids are side facing, they're not gonna kick you. So that, that's fine if they're moving their legs a little bit. But if they need restraint, they can certainly um, have their legs between parents' uh, knees and again, control those legs with, with the other arm. So it's, it's really just giving a nice, control the hug with that close arm <clears throat> for infants right between the two bodies for uh, toddlers and older kids arm behind the parents back and then and then you're ready to go um, you know there are there are, there are certain there are a lot of positions that you can use um, some parents do prefer having kids sitting back against them and you know, if they can wrap their arms and really control the arms, they may not control the legs very well, but if they can control things pretty well, it's, it works for them, it's okay with me. Um, occasionally, kids who are really frightened, all they wanna do is give their mom a big hug. And if you wanna turn them around facing mom and just let them hug arms kind of around your neck or the mom's neck, uh, and the mom's just holding the body that way, you'll need to control the arm, but certainly that's an option if kids just won't get into a, a position like this. Um, what else have I got here? And then of course, older kids, I don't, I, I, are we gonna be vaccinating older kids above four uh, in these clinics or is it just gonna be six months to age four? Or? We're gonna do just the little pediatrics as okay. we're, we're calling them. Okay. Um, if there's a need, we'll expand, but at this point, just. Okay, Focusing on that. you know, older kids can certainly be sitting next to parents or whatever, but we won't talk about that. Um, a couple of suggestions, um, no matter what the parents are doing, make sure you have a really good grip on, on the extremity that you're doing a shot on because you just never know uh, what's gonna happen. And uh, you, know, you can avoid problems if that arm or leg doesn't move. Um, I don't know what the staff is going to be like, but I think it's always a good idea if there's somebody kind of roaming to, in case somebody needs any help. There have been many times, as I mentioned, 
Uh, if I hear that a nurse is having trouble giving shots, I'll just walk in, hold the extremity firmly, and in two more seconds, it's done. So if there were somebody around who can just be aware of anybody who needs some help, I think that's a really that's a great suggestion. Yeah. I'll be available for that. in the in the ER. We, I mean, and it's probably just because of the circumstances, but we often have parents who are just so distressed that their kids yeah. being upset that they just check out. So, you know, if there's two people available, you can just say, go out in the hallway, come back yeah. in two minutes, like we'll be done. It's always an option. Yeah, I think in, in, in this kind of a clinic situation, if you could include the parent, I think it's option. Well, optimal, I think the but, parents who are bringing their kids are more yeah. likely to like be yeah. on board. But. but if they can't do it, it's okay to say, we, we can do it for you if you want. Um, a couple of Simple things, I'd, I'd have everything really ready before you, you you flag the kid in. I would have your alcohol swab opened. I would have your Band-Aid opened. I'd have your, your needle and syringe within reach. Um, I think if the kid is sitting there with mom or dad and you're fiddling with those things, that's giving the kid, the child a sign that something bad is coming. So I think uh, if, you, if you have it all ready, you can get things done that much faster. Um, the thing that I try to do more than anything else is to be really positive. You know, hi, it's great to see you. You're going to do so good today. Why don't you come and have a seat with us um, and, and we'll get this done. And I know, I know you're going to do great is the kind of thing that I often say. When I'm done, no matter how awful the kid may have behaved, I'm going to tell him he did a great job um, because he did. He, he, if he kept his arm still, that's all we're asking of him. I don't care if he screams and he's kicked, he can hold his arm or his leg still. That's all that I ask. So, uh, and, and if a kid is behaving badly, it's, it's not his fault. Uh, it's, it, who knows, but uh, give him praise after you're done. Um, there was a comment on the agenda. Is it okay to let mom breastfeed? By all means, I, if mom wants to breastfeed while you're giving a shot, sure, it's a great distraction. It's the most comforting thing a child can do. Uh, so, and, and, and holding, you know, an infant like this, it's a perfect position for breastfeeding. So, um, yeah, it's okay. Um, if the child wants a pacifier, it's okay. Um, if mom wants to just talk to the child, uh, talk about what they're gonna do, what's coming up in vacation, whatever, I think it's great. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, many of these kids these days walk in with, with screens in their hands. And uh, as much as I don't like them, um, if they wanna watch something on the screen while you're giving a shot, it's a great distraction. It's certainly okay. Um, I, I know we had shot blockers uh, available at, at the schools when we did the vaccines. Will we have these available? I, I don't know. Can you remind me what they are? I don't know if we did have those, Scott. Um, we did. I mean, I used them. I, they were there. Um, this, this is a little uh, thing with spikes on one side of it. I don't know. You probably can't mm -hmm. see it. Yeah, I well. can see them. Uh huh. Um, and you just if I were doing a shot on my forearm, say, you just place it right on the forearm and you press firmly and then the shot goes in this little uh, slot between the two sides. I don't know if you can see there's a little, a little slot there. And it just provides a little bit of neurological distraction. The kids feel the, the, the little nubby things on the bottom of this and they don't feel the shot as well. Um, and I think it's great for all ages, not just the kids who might be old enough to be, really be afraid, but if you can diminish the sensation of pain, even in a six month old, I think it's a nice idea to use these. I don't know where they went, the ones that we had for the school clinics, but uh, if there were some around, it would be nice to have those. The kids who were old enough for you to talk to them about it, you know, I'll tell them I've got this magical little thing here that's gonna make your shot hurt a little bit less or make your immunization hurt less. I try not to use the word shot. Um, and, uh, you know, if I push, put this on your skin and give you the shot, it's not going to hurt very much. And kids will believe you. They'll believe almost anything you say. So, uh, uh, it works. Uh, so I think sugar water on pacifiers. I mean, are we going yeah. whole hog with this? Uh, it, that, I don't know. It, it I, I, it, it can be done, but it may be something where we would need to be set up for and, uh, uh, it may not be involved much, but you'd have to have some sugar water there for that. Um, oh, um, I, I forget. Remind me what the uh, dosage is. How many seeds? What are we putting in? I, I have mean, to say, I'm not up on that. 
Yeah, it's 0.25. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, this is a, this is a second. <laughs> this is It's a tiny I mean, tiny dose, yeah, and a tiny is, shot. I mean, we're and and there's no, no reason not to go boom, right? Right. No, it's really fast, you know. Yeah, so, you know, I'm <laughs> Yeah. The, the other thing that I will say I often do is I just, you know, I'll just tell the kids what I'm doing as I'm doing it. All right, I'm, 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 this is my little alcohol swab. I'm going to clean your skin. Now I'm going to take the, my little dry pad and dry your skin. Now we're going to do the immunization. Boom, it's done. Uh, and then here's your Band-Aid. And, and just talking as you're doing it. Is well, oh. I, don't, I don't see that this is going to be that different than the five-year-old. So I don't know. Um, and the younger seems to me is going to be easier because they're not that excited. I mean, I don't know. The younger ones are easy. It's really a matter of trying to make it as pain-free as possible. You know, a shot okay. always hurts. Uh, and uh, anything you can do that makes the experience a little bit better for a baby, uh, if nothing else, might make future uh, okay. interactions with people giving shots easier. So that's that's the reason I talk about it. Sure, six-month-old baby, you put them on the table, boom, you do a shot, yeah. and you can do that. Uh, if you add a little extra thing like a shot blocker uh, or just having mom hold the baby rather than put him on the table uh, mm -hmm. so that the next time he's put on the table, he doesn't expect a shot right away. That shot uh, blocker looks good. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. they, they can be a little clumsy, if, but, but try them and, uh, and you'll, you'll kind of figure out how to use it. I'm sorry, I interrupted somebody. I, I wondered what do you have to do between patients with the shot blocker? How does that work? Do you have to clean it? Do you have to do anything? I don't. Uh, okay. because I wouldn't think of doing that, yeah. but I'm just asking, you know, because yeah. of this clinic setting. I, I don't know if Jennifer, you have any thoughts about that? No, I, I don't. I, I don't know unless just sort of a, a, a alcohol wipe. I think even the smell is sort of reassuring. For people. You could do that. That yeah. would be easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott, I'm more con um, concerned with, I mean, the, these babies have had vaccines before. Do you think, what do you think the chance of anaphylaxis is? I think if they, I think the chance is uh, as low as it is for adults. I mean, I don't okay. think we've experienced anaphylaxis in any of our vaccine clinics. Uh, it's extremely, extremely Okay, low. I just want to be prepared for this. Yeah. You know, no, that's no. more my concern that, you know, we haven't had to deal with that for so long yeah. for the boosters. But at the, at the beginning, I mean, the first shots, we certainly in Northampton dealt with that every day every time yeah. yeah not out of phylaxis but someone conking out sure um you know these the, these children who are six months and older have all had at least three different experiences yeah. with vaccines if not four um so they've all had vaccines so we should have an idea whether there might be a problem with any adverse reaction um but uh, i the only uh, um young people I've ever seen, and this is not anaphylaxis, but it's more fainting, who uh, people who faint after vaccines are almost always teenagers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm. That's been my personal experience. I don't know if, if the mothers, science right? find that. I haven't seen the mothers, I haven't seen the mothers get woozy. Um, but babies and young children, I have to say in my 28, 29 years of doing this, I've never seen them uh, Good. have a problem with uh, wooziness at all. Uh, anaphylaxis, it would be a one in a million event. It's okay, something good to know. Have to be ready for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I will say that most kids under age five or so are pretty blissfully unaware of what you're going to be doing. Uh, so it's, I, I think speed is really a good idea. Come on in. It's great to see you. Uh, we're going to do great here. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning your skin, I'm wiping it down, here's your vaccine, and, and we're done. Uh, sometimes parents may need more talking than the kids do. So that's, that's all I have to say. I don't know if you have any questions. I will, I will say, I think many of you, if, if any, of you, I never know who's who. Uh, nurses tend to be more tuned into comfort measures than doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> if you have other thoughts about comfort measures, by all means, chime in. Robin and Mary, Lisa, do you have anything to add? Um, we just have them like blow through a straw, like the little teeny ones, mm -hmm. right? You have them like blow out or if you have bubbles, you know, you're like one, two, three, blow some bubbles as you're yeah. giving the shot, like stuff like that. Yeah, we've um, used pinwheels in the office, you know, blowing oh. on pinwheels. Yeah, the blowing stuff. seems to really help yeah. at the moment of the infection. So. Yeah, yeah. 
But I, I think sort of the, the big thing is, as, as Scott was saying, you know, like the moment between, okay, parent hold and you giving the injection has to be almost instantaneous, right? Yeah. You can't <laughs> give them any time to build up any anxiety, you know, right. just do it and be done with it. Yeah. That, that's what I was going to say too. I think the anticipation is worse than the vaccination. Right. So Absolutely. just don't even do it. Yep. Yeah. One, two, three. Boom. Great job. Here's your bandage. See you later. Yeah. 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 Yep, I completely agree. Right, like the whole talking them through it can oh. be just. <laughs> One of my worst experiences was in the schools, and there was a school uh, person who knew this child really well, and she was trying to explain in every detail what was going to happen and how to stay calm. This kid had the worst time with this vaccine. I, mm. and, I, and I couldn't tell this woman to be quiet. I just wasn't appropriate. But uh, <laughs> it, was, it didn't make it any easier. Right. Yeah, I know in the schools, there were some private areas that were used just to keep a very distracting child and whatever out of the mainstream. Is that an option in our setting at all? So, you know, that's a really good idea. I'm going <coughs> to, I'm writing down clinic day tips. There will be, because we're going to be, Lillian's going to be posting the clinics, um, which we can announce after this, but they'll be in room 101 upstairs. And then we'll have that outer office outside of um, what was Lillian's office that we can bring people to. So that's a good point. We'll have something. Yes. Yeah. The other thing that might be helpful to have is a, a table, a padded table. There may be an occasional infant where it's just easier to put them on a table and hold them down. Um, yeah, hopefully that won't happen idea. much, but it's good to have it. Okay, I have it too. Yeah. Separate room. Rich, you're muted. <laughs> so, are you going to have an extra person floating around to give help with holding, uh, like we did with the high school, or with, with the elementary school? I'm going to be the extra person. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll be in the room because I know sometimes when the vaccinators are here for the Thursday clinics, I'm catching up on work in front of my computer, but I'll be actively in the room for the Sage group. That was a great point. Super. So just have you so gotten that, requests. What's that? Have you gotten requests from the town people? <clears throat> so we've gotten a lot of folks in, um, interested. Um, we're about to, I think it's next week, um, we're going to start with the, um, uh, just letting people know what's going on and advertising it. We have a great IT department, um, but I think Northampton area pediatrics is using just Pfizer and we are going to be Moderna. So oh. People know that we're Moderna. So, what, so what do you anticipate the first clinic, like middle of July? July 13th is going to be our first. Um, and then a month later, we'll have a follow up. And then Lillian, our second clinic will be when? Uh, July 27th, right? The, the second of the July months, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and we'll have a month after that. Right. Um, our public health nurse is starting next week. So I'm really happy to introduce um, Olivia Peters. So she's going to start um, transitioning, taking this over. So if there's a great need for this, we're just going to continue this as long as we need. You know, the health department is really, you know, we want to be helping vulnerable populations. So what can we do to reach that demographic? Perfect. But we're starting with this little pilot, pilot series. Great. All right, I have to go to, a, I'm sorry, I have to go to another meeting, but thank you, Lisa, for, both, for coming. Both the 13th and the 27th, I can do those. I'm excited to help. Thank you. Good and to see you. Thanks a lot, Scott, for the, for the information. Bye. Thank you. Uh, anyone else with questions? I'm away before, slightly before, I think just uh, after, but I may stop in and just get a quick observation, that's okay. Do you wanna be the floater, Rich? Is that what you were talking I, I might about? be able to be the floater for the, um, you know, the first session. Oh, you are, you are welcome to, <laughs> to do that. And uh, I'll let you know for sure, because okay. I'm, I'm leaving the next day, so. Okay. You Great. know, I, I signed up for the first session as a vaccinator and I'm thinking now, that I think somebody who's done this before, you know, oh, Maureen, would you be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and oh, I was also wouldn't mind being there just to kind of help and see. Yeah. Um, you know, just I I don't think it's going to be hard. But yeah. if you I know Diane is doing it, she's maybe had a little more experience with this age group than I have. But for the just with the circumcisions, that's when I gave all my shots. <laughs> I know, but I I just never did did painful things to babies before, you know, <laughs> not on purpose anyway. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting a feel for things. So if someone else wants to step up, I didn't realize how how infrequent the, the schedule is at the beginning. So, it, you know, it's just a couple of clinics and I I would rather just kind of uh, let someone who's, who's experienced kind of lead us off. We want to have a very successful first day. <laughs> we do. All right, we'll, we'll see who else is available, Maureen. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. It seems like there are plenty of the pediatrician nurses and whatever around, so. I have to tell you, I'm going to be away both of those weeks in July. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid, of, uh, yeah, I think I'll be away both of those weeks in July. I am as well. I'm away those. Mm -hmm. If you can't find somebody else, I'll do it. But if it, if just thinking about, you know, this isn't for me, this is for, for this <laughs> clinic to be successful. I'd like to do it. I'd like to learn how, but you know, this is um, really for the babies. I hear what you're saying. So I'll, I'll follow up with okay. you and, and thank you, you know, for, for volunteering. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I said to more, I sent her, I said, they're signing up. Do you want to sign up with me? So maybe you can think. <laughs> but I, I, I feel comfortable because I'm used to acting quickly. And I also have grandkids and I always think of, I don't, I want to do things the least disruptive. Once uh, someone said to me, I was doing a circumcision, you did it so quickly. And I said, this is not something you want to take a long time at, you know? yeah. And I always think of that, you know, that to do it accurately, but also to be able to do it quickly is really important. So I, I feel okay. Good. I think, you know. <laughs> yep. You yep. guys will all do fine. Yeah, good. I think the elementary schools were good practice for mm -hmm. thinking on the fly. They yeah. were. Yes. They were harder. So, you know, that if I hadn't done that, I might actually feel differently. But having to just figure out stuff and work quickly and work as a team, that really, I feel prepared for a lot of things. And I think this will be easier than the elementary schools. Yeah. yeah I do too. Yes. <laughs> I bet it will be. <laughs> yeah. The kids won't be there with their friends, you know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So. so I think after this, Lily and I will send out sort of an official thanks for coming <clears throat> and um, a sign up. Uh, we'll get that back out and right. just uh, anything else we need to do. Great. Will you tell Carol we say hello? I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Thank you so much, everybody. And email me with any questions. Scott, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank My you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> As, are there little reactions that we can Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Okay. Really. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. If you want the recording, let me know. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.